Well, Fernand, tell us a bit more about the court's decision today. Is it a victory for Russia, a victory for Ukraine, indeed a victory for both? Well, this is clearly a victory for Russia, uh, Nadia, because almost all of Ukraine's allegations here were thrown out. Now, they had brought this case under two different treaties. One is that Financing of Terrorism Act, and they were hoping to pin Russia's support for militias in eastern Ukraine uh, under this act. However, this court ruled that the provision of weapons, the provision of training, that did not violate this act. It is only about providing money. Uh, now, that also destroyed any hopes from Ukraine to pin, for example, the um, downing of flight MH17, which it has been proven by another court here in The Hague that the weapons were produced by Russia. Uh, that basically disappeared with that ruling. Uh, the only thing that this court found is under that financing of terrorism act that Russia failed to comply because they failed to investigate certain individuals who were um, told, uh, who Ukraine told them could be financing terrorism. So that was a violation, but that's small beef if you look at the bigger picture. Uh, the other treaty here was about the elimination of all forms of racial violence, uh, uh, discrimination, sorry, and uh, that Again, the court did not go along with Ukraine's arguments. They said the fact that the Crimea, the Tatar minority in Crimea was being targeted, that was not because of their ethnicity, but because of their political opposition to Russia. And that included the closure of the Majlis, the um, Tatar representative body in Crimea. Now, the only win, as you said, was on that Ukrainian language education, 90 percent decrease in Ukrainian language education in Crimea since 2014. Uh, and the court did say that Russia should reinstate Ukrainian language uh, education in Crimea. However, it did not provide any kind of damages for that or any kind of compensation for parents who had to not be able to see their children educated. Uh, and there was a sort of a, a slap of the wrist uh, for Russia for violating preliminary provisional measures, which included the fact that Russia should not aggregate this conflict. Now, of course, it has invaded Ukraine. Uh, so to say that it has not aggregated is a, is, is a very, uh, it's a slap on the wrist. It's something that, you know, the court was very keen to point out that this has been ordered, but it doesn't have any any meat around it. They can't really do anything. So really a very good day for Russia here at the ICJ today. All right, a good day for Russia. What do you think happens now, Fernand? Well, so that's the question. This is... Um, a final ruling. There is no appeal, poss uh, appeal possible. Uh, and this was also uncharted waters. I mean, this, this treaty of, on the financing of terrorism had never been tested at the UN court. Uh, but it's part of a larger strategy by Ukraine, something they, they've called lawfare. They're taking Russia to court in various different for uh, fora. And they'll actually be back here at the ICJ within two days. On Friday, there will be another case here being discussed that Ukraine has brought against Russia, this time on the violation of the uh, Genocide Convention. Uh, and there again, the court will have its say on where this court has jurisdiction. So another uh, battle coming in uh, between Russia and Ukraine here at the ICJ. Fernand Van Tetz at The Hague. Thank you very much indeed.